who are watching us live online. My name is Yoktu Karajalolu. I am the program director of this year's Space Studies program, and it's my great pleasure to also serve as the master of ceremonies of this very prestigious event this evening. 2022 indeed marks a very important year for ISU. It is our 35th anniversary of our establishment, and we are indeed truly honored to celebrate this very special year here in Portugal, where we feel truly welcomed. I would like to also take this opportunity to thank our hosts for this summer, the Portuguese Space Agency, the Tecnio, uh, Lisboa Tagus Park Campus, and Oerashwali City Council Municipality. Today, we have many prestigious guests here with us in this auditorium. Mr. Izalchuni Morais, the mayor of Arash. Professor Rogerio Kobasu, the president of Tecnio. Mr. Ricardo Conde, the president of the Portuguese Space Agency. Professor Pascal Ehrenfeld, the pre uh, president of the International Space University. Mr. Hugo André Costa, the head of local organizing committee. I would like to also acknowledge Mr. Paolo Nespoli, the Italian astronaut, Ms. So Yeon Hee, the South Korean astronaut, and Mr. Jim Green, the former NASA chief scientist, who are also with us in this auditorium and sharing our excitement this evening. In this year's program, ladies and gentlemen, we have 107 participants, including nine from Portugal, and in a total representing 37 different nationalities, which is also a record for ISU. We have a very balanced distribution of engineers, scientists, managers, lawyers, doctors, journalists, artists, and many, many other backgrounds. As every other SSB, the participants joining today are hand-picked, and we have more than 60% of the class having a master's degree or higher. No later than tomorrow, we will kick off with our core seminar series, where our participants will have their chance to hear from world-renowned experts who will join us from all over the world, from US, from Canada, South America, France, Portugal, Japan, Asia, many other countries. As of today, our records show that no less than 212 experts will be lecturing throughout the summer here in Portugal. We'll also complement these seminars with dozens of hands-on and interactive workshops, as well as many evening events. We are also very, very excited to test the very first ISU lecture in the metaverse this summer here in Portugal, which will be delivered by Tara Rutley, the chief scientist for the developing space station Orbital Reef. And for the public, all of you, Yes, we do have many activities, and you do have a chance to attend these activities throughout the summer. We have astronaut panels, we have keynote speeches, we have CEOs of new space companies, and many others. For these and many other public events, I would like to encourage all the locals to register for free on our Eventbrite page and join us. And if you are not based here in Oerash, Portugal, many of these public events will also be webcasted live. So please follow us online at isunet.edu slash live, which is the same link that you are watching us at the moment. And finally, in the last three weeks of the program, it's the time for the SSP participants to work on their so-called team projects. This year, we have five topics to be explored, and three of which has been proposed by the local space community here in Portugal. The team project Space <coughs> for Non-Space, the team project Space Climate Interactions, 
the team project microgravity business. In addition, we have the team project on international cooperation on Chinese space station, and the team project about new methodologies in search for life. I hereby would like to also invite you to, to join us for the final presentation of these projects later in August, where our participants will present their work and findings to the public as well as the experts in our evaluation board. And finally, as another important aspect of this year's program, at the end of next month, from July 29 to July 31st, we will be hosting our traditional ISU alumni conference. This event will bring an additional 300 ISU alumni here to Oerash from all over the world again, and will create a wonderful opportunity, networking opportunity, I should say, for the Portuguese space community. With that, I believe now it's time to invite and meet the class of SSP 22, who will join us in this auditorium, but not only, who will also join us online, because this year we have also 15 participants joining SSP in a virtual manner. As an ISU tradition, every country is called, will be called in the alphabetical order of the country, and they will march behind their flags. Please be informed that we have some countries only represented virtually where our staff members will help us to place their flags on the podium on their behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, let the SSP 22 parade start. With your big applauses, please, I would like to acknowledge and call on stage our first country, Australia. <laughs>
Coming up next. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
ladies and gentlemen, please join me welcoming the class of SSB 2022. We already know that it will be an amazing summer for them, it will be an amazing summer for us, but let them enjoy it for the next uh, nine weeks and then in the closing ceremony they will express their feelings themselves. With that I would like to now invite to the floor our hosts uh, who very warmly welcomes us here in Oyrush, where is our home for this summer and I'm very sure actually majority of us will come back again and again and again in the upcoming years. Please join me welcoming to the stage the mayor of Oyarash, Izalchuni Morais. Morning, Alex Star. Uh, I go to speak in Portuguese. Uh, the translations in Monica. Bom, um, senhoras e senhores, representantes das diferentes delegações dos países aqui presentes, é uma enorme satisfação e uma grande honra a receber aqui eh, tão ilustres delegações. Realmente, eh, o Eres é um município acolhedor, é um município multinacional, porque residem aqui cidadãos oriundos de 117 países, estou a falar de pressa demais, de 117 países uh, e naturalmente que estamos habituados justamente a esta diversidade cultural que é fundamental para que cada um se sinta bem e sobretudo sinta o seu espaço de liberdade. E a darmos as boas-vindas e a darmos as boas-vindas Uh, da praxe uh, neste tipo de cerimónia uh, o presidente do município bastará dar as boas-vindas não teria mais nada que dizer mas na realidade eu estava ali sentado e é com alguma emoção que vejo desfilar todas estas bandeiras estes estandartes representativos de Quantas nações? 30 aí? Bom. Todas as nações por aqui desfilaram. E naturalmente que o meu pensamento dirigiu-se justamente para os problemas que assolam o mundo. Porque é a guerra. Eu julgo que todos nós, quando passou o estandarte da Ucrânia, sentimos como que um arrepio. E ao vermos tanta gente, os portas estandartes, os portas estandartes deste, aqui, por aqui desfilaram, o que é que é preciso para que o mundo viva em paz? Se partilhamos conhecimento, as culturas que antigamente dividiam os povos e que nós com frequência dizíamos, bom, é de outra cultura, a outra cultura era estranha, era o estranho. As diferentes culturas hoje são uma só cultura e unem as pessoas em vez de dividir. E por isso, mais estranho é como suportamos as guerras um pouco por todo o mundo e designadamente aqui na Europa, porque estamos em guerra na Europa. E eu não posso deixar de expressar aqui, perante esta comunidade representativa de tantos países, a solidariedade, 
para com a Ucrânia, para com o povo da Ucrânia. Eu sei que é, eu sei que é hoje um lugar comum dizer estas palavras. Começa a ser um lugar comum. Eu estou a dizê-lo sentidamente. Desejo ardentemente que não se transforme num lugar comum, porque isso então será muito grave, será muito mal para todos nós. Queria também dizer-lhes que, falar-lhes um pouco de Veiras, vou ser rápido, falar-lhes um pouco de Veiras. Veiras é um município com uma posição, uma localização estratégica extraordinária, porque está aqui onde o Tejo termina e o mar começa, está aqui às portas de Lisboa e, portanto, procuramos que tenha tudo o que de bom tem Lisboa e não ter nada do que de mal tem Lisboa. Procuramos qualidade de vida, procuramos que as pessoas que aqui residem ou trabalham se sintam felizes e somos um espaço de acolhimento das maiores empresas multinacionais ou portuguesas nas áreas das tecnologias, das biotecnologias, tecnologias de informação ou mesmo instituições de investigação. E é por isso que o Eiras, de alguma forma, complementa o Estado português no apoio às instituições de investigação científica. O Eiras é mesmo o único município em Portugal que tem uma agenda para a ciência e tecnologia. Isso demonstra a nossa sensibilidade para a investigação, para a importância de novas descobertas para a importância do conhecimento. Aliás, o próprio lugar onde estamos, o Tagus Parque, onde está a decorrer esta conferência, uh, uh, chamamos justamente a Cidade do Conhecimento. E chamamos-lhe a Cidade do Conhecimento porque ela representa como exemplo, em termos de urbanismo, em termos de ambiente, ao nível da arquitetura, ao nível das, das, das empresas que aqui estão instaladas, e muito particularmente à vivência cívica deste espaço. É por isso que a Oeiras de hoje é diferente da de Oeiras de há 30 ou 40 anos. É um município que podemos considerar um case study porque teve uma evolução em termos de desenvolvimento, de geração de riqueza, que sendo um município territorialmente pequeno, com menos de 200 mil habitantes, é o segundo município em Portugal que gera mais riqueza. Isto é, logo a seguir à capital, o é o município que contribui, dá o maior contributo para o produto interno bruto deste país. Uh, e naturalmente que isso fez-se uh, com muito trabalho, com planeamento, uh, com aproveitamento das boas cabeças, ouvindo bons conselhos e sobretudo com persistência. Aliás, como fazem os investigadores, como fazem os cientistas, que às vezes andam 20 ou 30 anos para fazer uma descoberta. Uh, e esta agenda de ciência também tem uma dimensão na área do, 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 da aeronáutica e do aeroespacial. De maneira que é a minha convicção que dificilmente em Portugal uh, haveria um município que pudesse receber-vos como o município de Torres. Por outro lado, a realização desta conferência aqui representa para nós um incentivo extraordinário. Porque nos mostra como de facto é fundamental a partilha de conhecimento e, sobretudo, a importância que os poderes públicos têm no sentido de fomentar a investigação, a ciência, porque todos temos, de alguma forma, consciência das dificuldades que os cientistas têm. Em Portugal, foi preciso haver o Covid para que quem tem poder, e até o povo, se apercebesse que os cientistas ganhavam muito mal, eram muito mal remunerados. E, sobretudo, para se aperceberem da importância que a ciência e o conhecimento têm nas nossas vidas. Portanto, aperceberam-se que realmente é de uma importância vital o trabalho de investigação que é feito nos laboratórios, nas universidades, nos centros de investigação e por aí vai. Portanto, termino eh, desejando, eu sei que é o 34 Uh, encontro uh, e naturalmente desejo o maior sucesso uh, que, 
realmente uh, seja possível partilhar ao máximo, que saiam daqui com entusiasmo. Uh, eu lhe quero felicitar por verifico que são, ainda bem, predominantemente jovens. Predominantes jovens, predominantemente jovens, isso é bom. Uh, e quero felicitar todos os jovens que aqui estão, sem descurar os outros, não é? Uh, porque eu também me considero jovem, mas uh, mais, uh, mais na cabeça mais em cabeça do que propriamente na agilidade, porque eu tenho que subir as escadas com algum cuidado. Uh, por isso, dou-lhes então as boas-vindas a Oeiras, uh, procurem, conhecer, procurem conhecer os nossos jardins, os nossos espaços muito bonitos. Eu vi aqui desfilar o, o ex libris de cada um dos países. Uh, nós temos dos jardins mais bonitos de Portugal. Uh, Gozem do sol, da praia, também temos aqui praias, bem pertinho. É a vantagem que temos, é que temos campo, temos praia, o clima é bom, embora nesta altura faça um pouco de vento, à noite, sobretudo, mas usufruam, procurem aproveitar enquanto nestes dias que aqui estão, de conhecer melhor eh, o nosso município e a região de Lisboa, se tiverem tempo para isso, e naturalmente da nossa parte eh, estaremos sempre disponíveis para vos acolher com a hospitalidade que nos caracteriza. Os maiores sucessos. Muito obrigado. Hello everyone. I'll try to convey uh, the president's message. Uh, I'll make a small summary. So first of all, he's very honored to receive all of the delegations here. He likes to he would like to welcome you all. Uh, secondly, he said that he was very emotional seeing all of the countries um, that went through uh, here and, and displayed their flags, and he thought of Ukraine and what Europe is going through at the moment. He also mentioned that with all the knowledge that we have as people, as European people, it's amazing how we still have wars. Um, and then he went on to, also I forgot, um, this is very important also, Oaitas is one of the municipalities that, that has more, uh, has a lot of nationalities. One hundred and seventeen, sorry, I was just checking my memories, I'm so good. Um, so we, uh, Oaitas already has a lot of people living in it, so it's a very free municipality People are very welcome here. Um, it's also a municipality that welcomes knowledge and supports research. This is why it is very important to receive you here because um, having all of you young people and not oh, so young, but still um, to come and uh, help OEDAS develop uh, in research, mainly now aerospatial research. Um, so they are very, very happy to have you. They would like to welcome you and ask you to enjoy the municipality, all the gardens and all the good weather and all the beaches that you can go to and enjoy. Thank you. So uh, the president would like to convey that because of the uh, size of all the companies that Oedas has, um, it has be become known as Oedas Valley for technology, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Morais. Muito obrigado. Our participants are only here for three days, but indeed, uh, on their behalf, I can tell that uh, we feel very welcome, and we know that there are so many things to discover throughout the summer. Probably nine weeks will not be enough indeed. So next in line, indeed, I, was, I would be very happy to introduce uh, our International Space University's uh, chairman of the Board of Trustees, 
uh, Mr. Christian Salaberger. He was indeed uh, waiting for his plane in Canada yesterday night. It gets delayed and delayed again. And early this morning, he got the message that it is unfortunately canceled. So uh, he tried all the other options, but unfortunately there was no other option which can make him to join us in person. So I would like to convey his messages to the class of SSP 22. Uh, that he is wishing you a wonderful summer and he thinks that when the summer ends you will be the next workforce in the future of the space community and you are ready for that because you will get your ISU pins. Uh, Mr. Christian Salaberger, by the way, is one of our first class uh, ISU master class. So the, one, of, one of our first uh, alumnus of our master's program himself as well. Next, I would like to also uh, call on stage another host uh, that we have. Indeed, we are in Oerash, you know, spending our in, uh, time in Oerash, but majority of our time, probably, if you check the calendar, it says uh, around 15 to 16 hours a day, indeed, we will be in a location called ISD, technical. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Rogerio Colasu, who is the president of Instituto Superior Tecnico, who is our host this summer. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen students of the SSP 22. It is an honor for me to receive you here and to welcome you here this summer. Uh, here in Instituto Sfoga Tecnico in, at his campus in Tagospar, Uegas. So, um, uh, uh, three words uh, that I want to share with you. The first one is in what concerns bringing the SSP22 to Portugal and to Tecnico uh, here at our campus. Um, uh, this was a, a long uh, and grateful process for me. Uh, it started two and a half years ago when uh, um, a couple of colleagues come to my office with this idea of uh, making uh, the uh, SSP22 here in at Technico. By uh, that time, we were discussing what would be the best location for the event for this summer, because we, we have three campuses, one in Lisbon, one in Lourdes, and the other one here at Tegos Park. And by that time, while we were discussing that, we, we thought that uh, maybe, and, and I uh, agree uh, with the, uh, the words of the mayor, his Altino, because Uegas, we have summer, we have beaches, sun, we have a good and sympathetic reception for all the people and we have te technology and uh, the will to receive people from young people from every country in the world so uh, to make uh, that possible it was not as easy as that because you you, you see in in, in in lisbon the uh, capital we have uh, uh, better, uh, or not better, but more, more offers in what concerns the uh, the uh, offers for hostels, for transportation, and for that. And so, the first step that we we, we have to uh, overcome is the um, the uh, uh, allocation for the people, the uh, the uh, dorms for the students, for all of you, the transportation between the campus and the the, the dorms. And so to, to, to become, to make that possible, I would like to uh, first word uh, of thanks to the municipality. Without your help, 
it would be almost impossible to, to have this event here. So in the, uh, the person of the mayor, I would like to thank you, thank you so much. So uh, the second uh, thing that I want to share with you is just to briefly talk to everyone of you what is technical, what is the uh, institution that together with the, um, with the Portuguese space uh, agent, agency and the, uh, the uh, um, International Space University are uh, hosting this, uh, this the SSP, SSP 22 uh, this summer. Uh, Technical is the largest school of engineering. In Portugal, we have uh, more than uh, 20, uh, 22, to be more correct, uh, uh, courses or formations in engineering. And uh, we have uh, 12,000 students. This is the, uh, our institution. We are a research school with uh, uh, 25 research centers in all the areas of knowledge in science, engineering, and mathematics. And uh, um, uh, of course, that uh, now uh, the uh, space agenda, and uh, I think we have also the president of the Portuguese Space Agency for sure will tell something about that. Yeah, but what I was uh, telling is that the space agenda is uh, an important agenda here in Portugal, namely after the creation of the Portuguese Space Agency. But here in Technico, 20 or almost 30 years ago, we, we, we start with this agenda uh, by with the creation of the uh, aerospace engineering. Uh, now the aerospace engineering um, uh, welcomes the uh, best students in engineering in Portugal and the, uh, we enroll uh, more or less 120 uh, uh, students per year and they are for, for sure a very well talented people and I uh, see uh, a couple of them here in this um, SSP 22. Uh, so um, um, the uh, uh, last thing that uh, I uh, want to share with you uh, is the effect that behind me there are 32 flags. I think Ricardo was telling that there are 37 uh, people of the, uh, 37 different national nationalities here, but I, I can't. 23, uh, and any, anywhere more than 30 different nationalities here. And the uh, last thing that uh, this is, uh, in fact, um, something which uh, um, it's uh, a little bit emotional, I think, at least for me and maybe for all of us because of two reasons. Because uh, during uh, two and a half long years, it was very difficult. I mean, research school, science, and teaching, and uh, university and academy lives of internationalization of people from different countries sharing their knowledge, their experiences, their uh, lives. During two and a half years, we uh, have a strong impair in that with the uh, COVID pandemic. And after, that a war began in Europe. Um, again, uh, these strange times that we live, I really hope that are not a, a step back in this sharing of different cultures, different experiences, and different ways of thinking that people from different countries bring when they are together. So these strange times that we live makes that this summer with more than 30 different nationalities here are a unique opportunity which one of you and to each one of us. So. Thank you very much for being here. 
and I wish you a very good and nice and unforgettable summer here in Tecnico in Leves. Thank you so much. Mr. Colasu, thank you very much. We indeed feel very welcome, not only because, you know, we, we are not providing only classrooms, it's not something, you know, that, but also the personnel who is with us all the time, the personnel of the, 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 the buildings, but also the personnel serving the food, for example, they are so friendly and I'm sure it will make a huge difference. So once again, thank you very much on everybody's behalf. Thank you. And one last thing, I just in the backstage learned that actually today also is a special day for you. Similar to me, we are actually sharing a birthday today. Oh, yeah. So congratulations. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so now it's my pleasure to introduce our president, the president of the International Space University to address the class of SSP 22, Pascal Ehrenfeind. <laughs> Apparently the sound is pretty low there, so they ask me if you can also use this one. Uh, both of them. Yeah. Wow. So if, if I'm too, too loud, then you, you just let me know. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, 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 Goktuk, and um, I want to welcome all uh, our distinguished guests. Uh, we have uh, really a lot of people here uh, from, from all over the world, but also uh, people which really host us here, and we have uh, famous astronauts here. And um, I think um, uh, I want to say a little bit uh, um, or elaborate on, on what the previous uh, speaker said. I really also think it is wonderful that we are here with uh, so many nations uh, peacefully trying to um, learn more about space, about what space uh, um, can do for society in the future, how we can mitigate global challenges and um, discuss all the uh, uh, exciting exploration endeavors for the future. So really going in the future together with so many nations and in an international spirit in the times which are really hard when we look around and also the last two years. So uh, I also hope that you uh, really, really have a great summer and uh, we have already some of the lecturers here um, uh, for you and I want really to welcome all the participants of uh, the SSP 22 online and uh, um, the, uh, uh, of course the on-site participants. So uh, we have already uh, elaborated how many participants and from how so, so many countries but I really want to um, thank again our co-hosts, uh, the Portuguese Space Agency and the Instituto Superior Tecnico, uh, Tagus Park uh, in the city of Irish. Really thank you very much. We are extremely excited uh, to co-host the ISU Space Studies Program 22 with you. So uh, many of you, of course, know ISU, but the International Space University is really the sole university uh, worldwide which is devoted entirely uh, to space education. And this since 1987, you have already heard, we celebrated this April our 35th anniversary. And um, we have now more than 5,200, and after the summer, even more, uh, uh, alumni from over 110 countries. And um, I think that um, ISU represents something which is really, really crucial today, uh, namely this um, learning environment uh, of um, interdisciplinary research, uh, being intercultural, and being um, uh, in an international network. These uh, have been uh, the very important um, uh, basic um, constituents in the beginning to form uh, ISU by uh, the three entrepreneurs, um, uh, uh, Bob Richards and Peter Diamandis and Todd Hawley. 
And uh, I think uh, what they have been thinking, you know, 35 years ago, uh, is really extremely important right now, namely that we uh, learn to work together with many nations, uh, with many cultures, and in an interdisciplinary way to manage the global challenges ahead. And um, I hope that you can gain this spirit and that you learn uh, a lot because team projects are difficult. Uh, and uh, to work with people from many different backgrounds, you know, on one uh, topic and try to get a really output. This is exactly what we need in order to uh, look at global challenges ahead. And this is what you are learning uh, uh, this summer with many different different topics. I came completely out of script, so I don't anymore know uh, where I was. But uh, <laughs> I think I also wanted to say that we are living in this really uh, exciting uh, time of um, uh, an increasing and, and growing uh, global space economy and a very dynamic space sector. And uh, that provides a lot of opportunities. Uh, I have been just at a, um, a really interesting meeting in, in London about investing in space. And we, in Europe alone, we uh, the, the industry estimates that they need about 300,000 uh, people in the workforce in an, until 2030, and we need reskilling and upskilling uh, of, of 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 our workforce, uh, and also in the in the U.S. Um, uh, the space sector is growing, so we need uh, a really. Um, um, well-educated workforce in the future because the space sector is growing. There is a lot of private investment. There is uh, um, a lot of startups. More than 1,700 startups have been um, uh, um, uh, received investment in the last 10 years in the amount of 250 or 260 billion dollar. So um, the new space sector is shaking everything up and connecting to the non-space sector. One of the team projects is dedicated to that. So you are actually, you know, um, uh, making a course at a time where um, the space sector is really uh, extremely dynamic and vibrant, and uh, uh, you can uh, see what, how, in what direction the space sector is going because our lecturers come from all over the world and will uh, teach you about the newest trends. So I want to, at the end, still to thank um, all the I SSP 22 staff, faculty, alumni, program sponsors, and partners for their really generous uh, contributions of time, resources, and brain power. Uh, to this SSP 22 program um, and which will welcome students and professionals in person but also online. And I still want to uh, thank uh, uh, again the president of Portugal for his support. You will see a message very soon and I've seen it already. Uh, it is really a very, very wonderful message. The municipality uh, of uh, the Portuguese, uh, um, uh, of, of, uh, uh, of Irish, and its mayor, Mr. Isaltano Moiraes, as I hope I pronounce it correctly, <laughs> the president of Technical uh, Professor Rogerio Colasso, which I just explained to you that technology and research is really at the heart here in Irish and at this park. And I think uh, that is really, really promising. You are really in a stimulating and inspiring environment here. Um, the president of the Portuguese Space Agency, Ricardo Conde, uh, the head of the local organizing committee, Hugo Costa, which will speak all after me, and also ISU SSP director, Goktuk or simply go to, and he took the thunder out of it because I wanted also to say that it is his birthday today. Um, I also want to thank uh, the Portuguese companies um, and a research center and space uh, professionals which are involved and here teaching also and helping with the team projects here at SSP2. So we are all really, really proud of being part of the ISU community. 
and I hope you will also decide to be a part of this ISU, co uh, ISU community, be an active member, and uh, probably take uh, other courses of the ISU, and um, have this shared experience of this really international and dynamic uh, working environment here. We hope that this fosters also your careers, and uh, there will be many networking events, starting with, uh, I think, already in the next week, and uh, the uh, Global Exploration Conference, uh, where people come from all the world, and you have the pleasure, uh, uh, you know, to go at the reception and to network with the people. That's really something very exceptional that the Portuguese Space Agency made happen. We have also the alumni coming at the end of, uh, end of uh, um, July, and I just want to wanna close by saying I wish you a very, very rich uh, learning experience and uh, that you will actually also really find long, uh, lifelong friendships here, and I wish you a great summer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pascal, for this wonderful address to the class. Um, let me actually clarify about the number of flags, by the way. Um, so indeed, there are 32 flags behind me, uh, and I said there are 37 countries, so what's the difference? Some uh, participants indeed have dual nationalities, and we just couldn't give them two flags to carry at the same time, so this is why not indeed all the flags are represented behind me on the stage. So, uh, we have heard from um, two of our hosts, the OERASH, uh, our mayor, and uh, IST uh, from the president. And the third, uh, last but not least, uh, host is the Portugal, Portuguese space agency, Portugal Space. So it's my pleasure now to introduce the president of the Portuguese space agency, Ricardo Conde. So thank you uh, to be here with us today. Dear Pascal, thank you very much uh, to make this possible. Also Rogério, uh, our host, the scientific part, also Weres, and also to my colleagues. Hugo, thank you very much for all the efforts. Also my team, uh, I see many, many others that are put a lot of efforts that this could be possible. Let me take some words of uh, uh, Professor Rogério about the strange moment that we are living today. Of course, we had, we still have the COVID. We have this, uh, let's say, crazy moment that we are living nowadays about the Ukrainian. Thank you to be here. Uh, we have the representative here for the uh, Ukrainian embassy. And also, uh, all of you that uh, probably you are sharing another dimension of the problems that we are living today. And by the way, this week we received here in Lisbon the United Nations of Ocean Conference because it's one of the things that concerns all of us. So to add to the pandemics, we have also the war and uh, we are living a very let's say, crossroads of our existence about this slowly movement to a catastrophic, probably situation we will face in some years, which is the climate change. And this is something that we need to discuss, and this is something why space can bring to her some answers, and we need these answers. You all here will be face probably uh, some part of you, uh, I have these numbers here, 57 percent, the uh, engineers probably you are already working in this environment. And uh, you are well aware about the technology, space technologies, but space is more than technology, it's an inspiration. And all of us, when we, we were young, 
we thought about to go to the moon. You remember that uh, in, uh, in the 70s and the 80s, we dream that in 99, we should be leaving the moon. And you remember this uh, series, uh, not in Netflix at that time, but in the television, Space 99. I really liked to um, talk about that, because at that time, we had the conscience that we were, at that time, destroying our planet. And there are no escape. We need to go to the moon. Okay? Quite, quite natural, right? Because we were in the moon. On the 60, it's just a, a small step. And we look to the moon, some kind of escape to ourselves to be possible to extend our existence beyond the Earth. And what is funny is this journey to go to the moon is, is not so easy, right? Because we are thinking 50 years after, still think that we can go to the moon. And now we are thinking also, why not? On, on only moon, we go to the Mars. But f before, we need to take care of what you have here. Maybe uh, all of you, I check it, the statistics, we have uh, the participants, is, uh, the, the range of ages from 21 to 48 years old. Probably you remember this uh, scientist, Carl Sagan, that uh, this is your home. This is the place that you need to take care. Nobody will come to save us from ourselves. It is important to address this discussion. Why? Because today, space really can contribute to have an answer. Some kind of hope in the knowledge, some kind of hope in the science to solve the mess that we have been done in this planet, the anthropogenic moment that lasts 100 years, that we impact on the Earth more than all the existence. But we are not so, we are not uh, really happy with what we did on Earth, what we did, and we are doing the same in space, right? And we are living a moment, a very, very problematic moment in space which is the space debris. And this is another dimension of the problem because if we are not take care about our outer space, we cannot take care about itself, our home. And this is where the beauty beautiful of these space technologies can give you some answers. Because space at the end is a tool for diplomacy. And we need diplomacy nowadays. And uh, don't forget that uh, we are in a process for a deglobalization. Probably we don't want that. This is a reaction to what we're living today. What we want is through the knowledge, through the science, to collect the world in the better world and probably in the world that this COVID could be fight with the experience, with the knowledge. And probably if we not take care about our outer space, we should not continue our ambitions to be an interplanetary species in our universe. And this is something that uh, for sure you will learn here with uh, a lot of uh, expertise, a lot of uh, persons coming from the industry, uh, from the university, from the academia research centers. And uh, we will spend here two months, so I will, I will uh, uh, repeat what the mayors uh, said. Enjoy this uh, amazing country that we are, that give to the world so many worlds, and uh, uh, also uh, take the advantage of this multi, let's say, um, cultural environment and uh, several transversal uh, subjects that we will learn here. We will learn uh, probably the politics, 
not only at the politics of space, not only particular technology. And you will see that uh, particularly some persons will address the moment that we live in space. This is ruled by a new policy order. Nobody of us knows about what will be the space economy for years. We can have several scenarios. It could be a free scenario to develop some new services, new startups, but also who knows that the space economy could be ruled by four, five big players. You know what happened in the dot coms on the early of uh, uh, 2000? Everyone wants to play a role in the dot coms. At the end, there are five, ten top companies. And there are another scenario. Should we, are, are we, um, let's say, looking to space and operational and military operational domain? This will change all the rules. And this is something that uh, in our course here, you probably at the end, you will get a clear picture or a more clear picture what is about space and all the domains. Also the legal and the, the needs to international collaboration. Look at the example about the space debris. How can we solve issues like space traffic management? Only with collaboration. And we are looking particularly like we are looking today to the oceans and probably the maritime law is some kind of inspiration to do something in space, to regulate our space. And the law is really the glue that can allow all the countries to collaborate in a new, probably, international order. I will conclude here, but uh, I want to announce something that I, I talked with Hugo, but Hugo, by the way, we will, we will uh, present you uh, a long journey uh, with some pictures, with some emotional moments that brought to us to here today. But let me just announce this. We decided this, uh, I think it was today, right? You know that um, one of the pillars of our strategy in the uh, Portuguese Space Agency is the space education. And this, of course, uh, this uh, uh, space studies program, uh, we include this in, in our roadmap. And uh, in September, we make the, uh, we are organizing what we call astronaut by one day. This is a parabolic flight dedicated to the students, and what we decide is uh, the best SSP students. There will, there will be a word that uh, will fly in the in this campaign. So this is our contribution also to uh, this uh, uh, important moment the best student at International Space University who will fly in the uh, parabolic flights that we have in 16th of September. So don't, don't go away, eh? at least the best one. <laughs> so let's work. Huh? <laughs> so this, the, the competition will begin. Thank you very much. And uh, again, thank you to my team, Martha, Monica, Irminia, Nuno, uh, and of course, uh, uh, all my colleagues, they are seats, uh, they are, and uh, uh, this crazy uh, guy that uh, I have here with me, uh, Ugo, that is, uh, let's say someone must be the father, right, of the child, and uh, Ugo, and also Ricardo, uh, uh, Ricardo Marvão, and uh, Emir Siraj, I, th I think he's not here, but uh, thank you very much to turn this uh, reality uh, and part of our journey. And thank you to Weyres, thank you Pascal again, uh, thank you to the Technico, Rodrigo, everyone. All the best and let's, uh, I, I will pass the, the <laughs> video, but <laughs> this is the job of my colleague there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, Ricardo. Wow, that's a very, very impressive prize, actually. Now I can see all the, you know, eyes are brighter for the summer. So, well, in September, somebody from this auditorium will be doing a parabolic flight, apparently. Thanks once again to Portugal Space uh, for...
Do I want to go? Of course. Do I have two seats? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> OK, so um, actually, you made a very good summary of what the, uh, the participants will experience uh, this summer. So we have over 400 different activities, which covers pretty much all the domains uh, Ricardo mentioned, and probably some more. And at the end of the summer, we really want everyone around the room, because they're coming from many different backgrounds. We have lawyers, engineers, medical doctors in the room, artists, and we want everybody to learn about talking the other languages of different uh, other disciplines. That is the essence of SSB, and we hope that it will indeed happen. So, uh, today, as actually Ricardo was mentioning, uh, we also had many other guests, but there are many other events here in Portugal ongoing, which is uh, one is about uh, climate change. And one of our very distinguished guests, unfortunately, could not make to this particular um, uh, ceremony with us. But he was kind enough to send uh, a, a video uh, of him, who is the, the president of Portugal. So Marcelo Rebeo de Souza. So he kindly shared a video. And he says, I'm very sorry not to be there, but I would like to still address the class of SSB 22. So let's listen to him. Dear organizers and participants of the Space Studies Program 2022 of the International Space University, it is for me a great honor and pleasure to welcome you, all of you, to Portugal. Hosting this event in our country is a symbol of how important it is for us to science and in particular space research and technology, you're meeting. My first word of praise goes to Institut Superior Technico and its president, Professor Rogério Guasso, who once again had the courage to accommodate and support an international event with top quality researchers speaking about a groundbreaking research area. Space research and technology are indeed very relevant worldwide and to Portugal. The creation in 2090 of the Portuguese Space Agency was the much anticipated result of the growth in space research and industry in very recent years in Portugal. From Earth's observations to basic and applied research, leading to spin off applications. All these assists the resolution of challenges for humanity, and it certainly gets the involvement of researchers and industry based in our country. Finally, my warmest thank to the International Space University for not only understanding the importance of research on space and its applications through international and multidisciplinary education programs, but very special to the president of the International Space University, Professor Pascal Ehrenfreund. I'm sure the Space Studies Program 2022 in Portugal will reinforce your connection to our beautiful and sunny country and its people full of hospitality. Space has always fascinated humanity allowing us to dream of what is beyond our limits. I truly wish that the Space Study Program 2022 will enable you to keep your ambitions alive while learning new applications for the technology on Earth, near space and beyond. Welcome to Portugal. So on everybody's behalf in this auditorium and watching online, I would like to also thank for this very warm welcome to the country, to Dr. De Souza. Okay, so this morning I was talking to our participants and I mentioned to them 
SSP, the Space Studies program, is not only about the academic learning. Indeed, we have so many activities that they will learn, participate, but it's not only that. SSP is also a, what we call a live-in experience. It is a intercultural learning. And where we are, the host country, is indeed a very, very critical part of it. And here, we are very lucky indeed this year to be in Portugal. What I was telling to the participants that they have so many things to see, so many places to go and visit, so many delicacies to go and taste and enjoy. And of course, one of the cultural aspects is music. So the opening ceremonies, you know, are always a very good opportunity to start acknowledging and emphasizing this particular aspect of the program. So today, thanks to our local organizing committee, we are very lucky that we will be hearing a little bit of traditional Fado music. Uh, Teresina Landiero will be with us here on stage, and it will be our first introduction to the cultural aspect of the program. Enjoy.
Obrigada. Thank you. Boa tarde. Good afternoon. Uh, sorry, Portuguese people. I'm going to, to speak a little bit in English because it's easier for everyone. Um, in the first place, I want to say thank you for the invitation. Uh, Associação uh, Espacial Portuguesa, um, it's a huge pleasure to be here singing for you. Um, I'm a fado singer. It's, it's very important for me to represent our culture, uh, the most important or most traditional kind of music of, from Lisbon. Um, and I I'm going to explain briefly uh, what fado is or, or what we need to, to, to do fado. To play fado, we need four things. One voice and these three musicians. So a Portuguese guitar played by Pedro de Castro. The Portuguese guitar has 12 strings and is a little bit different from what maybe what you are, uh, what you usually uh, see. Here we have the viola de fado. It's, it's similar to the classic guitar, but a little bit different. And playing the classic, the viola de fado, André Ramos. <laughs> and then we have acoustic bass. Uh, and playing it, we have Francisco Spar. <laughs> I started with a traditional fado called Fat Tango, uh, with a lyric about time. Uh, and now I'm going to sing another one, a different kind of fado, a happier, a happier one, uh, called Amanhã, Tomorrow. <laughs> Digo a toda a gente Porque vivo Num constante contraplano Já jurei Que vou tentar fazer diferente Mas talvez seja melhor Seja melhor tentar para o ano Desde se a rua encontra tempo a rotina E no pulso o relógio contra mim Vou com pressa e a roupa não combina E o cabelo pro que é vai bem assim Escrevo tudo num papel que nunca tive E desejo ter um dia uma agenda Então que nenhum plano sobrevive E os amigos já me querem pôr à venda Amanhã É o que eu digo a toda a gente Porque vi Constante contraplano Já jurei Que vou tentar fazer diferente Mas talvez seja melhor Seja melhor a tentar para o ano Mas talvez seja melhor Seja melhor a tentar para o ano Já não sei se o plano de hoje é para o almoço Se para o lanche, para o jantar, se tenho dois Pouco importa, eu já sei que nunca posso E o de hoje fica sempre para depois As conversas que se têm de fugida Não dão espaço para lamentos nem praias Diz-me à pressa como é bela a tua vida Amanhã temos tempo para mais Amanhã É o que eu digo a toda a gente porque vivo num constante contraplano Já jurei que vou tentar fazer diferente Mas talvez seja melhor, seja melhor tentar para o ano Mas talvez seja melhor, seja melhor tentar para o ano mas talvez seja melhor, seja melhor tentar para o ano. Another love story. Uh, happier and sad, it's a mixed feeling. Janet. 
vi teus olhos pousar nela na janela que eu abri das cortinas voaram beijos e entre eles alguns desejos que pedi quando te vi Tinhas preso no teu jeito Um sorriso imperfeito Que marcava quando rias Trago ainda o olhar Com que olhavas ao passado Noites e dias Todas as vezes sorrias Com alguma timidez Ia sempre para a janela Pois sabia que por ela Descer à tua rua Uma noite em que a lua Pretear os olhos teus Vou dizer-te no olhar Não passei só por passar Queria os teus olhos Obrigada, muito obrigada. Now, Fado Magala, and this lyric is about a trip, and anyone can go as Fado has a trip, and anyone can go with 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 us. So, Fado is a trip, and you are invited to to come with us. <laughs> Onde cabe tanta gente Cantar fado é uma viagem Onde cabe tanta gente Cada um compra passagem E viaja como sente Cada um compra passagem E viaja como sente Ao passar pela saudade Há quem goste de sorrir ao passar pela saudade Há quem goste de sorrir Quem viaja pela metade Das saudades quer fugir Quem viaja pela metade Das saudades quer fugir Há quem volta sem destino A boleia deste 
pecado Há quem parta sem destino À boleia deste canto Pobre-te o clandestino Vai atrás de qualquer pranto Fumelhete o clandestino Vai atrás de qualquer pranto We are finishing. It's a small presentation only. Uh, I'm going to present again the musicians playing the Portuguese guitar, Pedro Castro. <laughs> playing the viola de fado, André Ramos. <laughs> playing the bass, Francisco Gaspar. Thank you, th thank you once more for the invitation. It's a huge pleasure to be here. Thank you for your silence. Uh, it was very good. <laughs> and now I'm going to sing a popular march because we are in June and we have the Saint Anthony, Saint Peter and Saint uh, John. John? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to finish with a popular march called Noite Saint Antonio. Mais o meu par Se eu não trouxesse quem havia de aturar Não digas sim, não digas não Negócios de amor são sempre o que são Já não há praça dos bailaricos Tronos de luz no altar de manjericos Mas é na praça que foi da figueira A gente cá vai, quer queira ou não queira A noite de Santo Antônio Lisboa de encantar Dá o que a a florir De foguetes a estourar Enquanto os bairros cantarem Enquanto houver reais Enquanto houver Santo António Lisboa não morre mais Lisboa é sempre namoradeira Tantos derriços que até já fazem fileira Não digas sim, não digas não Amar é destino, cantar é condão Uma cantiga, uma aguarela Um cravo aberto debruçado na janela Lisboa linda do meu bairro antigo Dá-me o teu bracinho, vem bailar comigo A oh, noite de Santo Antônio Sofras a fluir De foguetes a estourar Enquanto os bairros cantarem Enquanto houver reais Enquanto houver Santo António Lisboa não morre mais Para. Enquanto 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Obrigada. Is not it incredible, Tereshina Landero? So, once again, thank you. One more applause for them, please. I'm sure this will not be the last time we will listen Fado this summer, right? We will, we will discover new places. It gives me goosebumps. So, uh, as I think it was Ricardo mentioning it, so the seeds of this summer was not, you know, happened a couple of years ago. It was actually, it, it started maybe almost four years ago as an idea. And one of the people behind this idea is one of our alumnus from the International Space University, who is Hugo Andre Costa, who is with us today and who is the head of the local organizing committee of SSP 22. So now we are here enjoying this nine weeks ahead, our fantastic time, but I think it's worth to listen the story behind in the backstage from Hugo and his wonderful team. Hugo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And this is on, yes. So welcome everyone. Uh, and uh, why are we all here? How did we all end up here in this room um, for the SSP 2022? Steve Jobs said once, you can only look, uh, you connect the dots looking backwards. And uh, in fact, the first time I, I heard this quote, it was not from him, I was uh, in Australia. Uh, it was during the first Southern Hemisphere Space Studies program where I was together with Soyon and also Carol, she's over there, hello Carol. Um, and it was the very first uh, SHSSP that was performed. And the person who said this was this girl here, uh, her name is Beatrice Garcia, she's also an uh, ISU alum from uh, SSP uh, 09. And she was also TA back in, um, in the SHSSP in Australia. So ISU can change your life in many different ways because we are now married with uh, three kids. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> um, and then, uh, and this is very helpful when you live with someone that uh, share the same experiences that, uh, that you had and also share the same passions because when you have uh, uh, meetings with ISU late in the evening and you're always uh, working on for, for ISU and for space, she can also understand and, and it's, it's very easy then uh, things to go uh, in home. And, but we are here all today uh, in the SSP uh, 2022. We all come from different, uh, different places, from different backgrounds, but there was something that guided us here. And each one of you, I'm sure that you can look back, look to the dots in your life that brought you here. And if we think about the first dot would be 1997, 35 years ago, when these three uh, guys, Todd O'Hiley, Bob Richards, and Peter Diamandis, uh, thought that there's something missing, there's no space education, we need to change that. And they did it 35 years ago. They started the program that's very similar to what we have today. Uh, we'll have... Uh, teachers during the course that participated and they are uh, the, 
in the very first uh, um, uh, SSP that was realized. And if you look, for example, Peter Diamandis, the, the way these people, these three, changed education, it's also the way they changed the space sector. Because Peter Diamandis, he launched uh, in the beginning of uh, 2000 the X Prize. Uh, and the X Prize, in fact, it was uh, the, the prize that lead to what is today uh, Virgin Galactic, what is today um, uh, Blue Origin, because there was a contest to reach space 100 ki kilometers high uh, to for space tourism. And this is because he started this. Nowadays we have, because mostly we would have, but the developments would take longer. And because of this contest, time was shortened. And I first got to know ISU when I was uh, a student at university. We were performing a study to fly in microgravity. You can see here my team, and this was the fifth uh, easy parabolic flight campaign. Uh, during my research, I went online, and uh, I, s I found this International Space University website. And it looked like kind of weird, uh, I'll be honest. How can it be a one, one university dedicated just to space? It's too, it was too good to be true, right? So uh, this would be how it looked like back in 2001. And you would have, if you would apply to the SSP 2001, this would be similarly what uh, the web page would look like. And I want to thank Nicholas from ISU because it was thanks to him that I found these uh, this pictures on, uh, uh, from the website. And I don't know if you are aware, because right now, most of you, uh, maybe the young generations, when you go online, you just grab your mobile, and you have internet there. But back in 2001, 2002, when I want to go online uh, to do the research in the university, I had to, to wait for a computer to be free, I had to register, I would have one hour of internet, uh, and then a new student would come. And if you connect at home, Is it working? No. Once again? Higher? I'll go back. No. No. Can you hear something? But at ISU, you learn that there's always a way to make things happen. And... <laughs> so... This would be how internet sounds like back in 2001 when you want to connect. And you have 56 kbps per second of speed. So incredible high speed internet back then. And this was how it worked like in the past. But then, and this is now on the next slide. There it is. Uh, in 2016, uh, in 2006, I, I got to, vi to go to um, uh, IAC, the International Astronautic Congress, and I get to know ISU people, people that uh, from ISU, I met Nassim Bovet, for example, the head of the missions, uh, and from that moment on, I applied to the SSP 2008 in Barcelona, and uh, then my life started to change in the space sector. I got together with, uh, with a lot of people from uh, all different places around the world. Uh, I was not the geek that liked space. I was around the other geeks, so I felt at home with all, everyone that enjoyed space as much as I did. And if you remember, Goktug mentioned uh, two days ago that the person next to you will probably become uh, the head of an agency, will become a CEO of an agency. And if I look back, to 2008 when I did my first SSP. And I look at my colleagues, they are uh, vice president of Planet. When we started, they are now at Planet. I have people that, I know people that they have worked at the White House, at NASA, at the European Space Agency. They have started their own companies. They are very successful now. So the person next to you probably will be uh, a space leader in 10 years from now or even less than that. So this is actually, a, a 
moment that will change your life forever. And uh, I have friends from back then that I still call every month. Uh, we follow everyone's families, how things. So, and I also did the master uh, later on in the next year. And uh, Professor Simpson, Michael Simpson was the president at ISU back in the days. Uh, is I have the signature of his uh, of him in my uh, in my certificate. And <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but if you move fast now to 2018, it was the 10th anniversary of uh, of my alumni uh, meeting, and. Here, Juan Dalmau, who was the president back then, and was uh, during the alumni weekend, he said, well, we are looking for new places for the SSP, uh, if you guys want to, to apply. And this was the moment I was sit next to uh, Luis Ferreira and uh, was talking with him and said, look, maybe we can bring this to Portugal. And I was discussing with, um, uh, with Juan Dalmau and he said, yes, there's also another alumni, he's also here with us today, is Ricardo Marvão. And we start to talk together, how can we bring this uh, forward? But you know, all of those points that bring us here, they have to happen in a certain order, in a certain time, and things just have to be, uh, to work right. Couple weeks later, it happens that I talked with Minister Manuel Etor, uh, he, back then he was the, in 2018, he was the Minister of Science uh, and Technology. He's the one who started the Portuguese Space Strategy, the Portuguese Space Agency. And in the last 30 seconds of our conversation, uh, I told him, look, there is this program, the Space Studies program, I think would fit very well in uh, what you're doing right now uh, for Portugal. And uh, I explained the program and he said, yes, that sounds great, uh, try to bring it to Portugal. And then I had to talk with uh, Chiara Manfletti, she was back then the president of the Portuguese Space Agency, and she also happens to be an ISU alum, um, so it was very easy to convince her to bring the SSP to Portugal. And at this moment, we had Portugal Space uh, on board, and this became a project for Portugal, for the Portuguese Space Agency. From that moment onwards, you have already seen these faces around. I will not say the names, you will have to find them and know who they are, but they are the ones responsible to putting this together. There are two more people that they are here in the room, which is uh, Carolina and Juan, uh, jo Joan, perdona. <laughs> uh, they will be together with you in the team projects. But, as we mentioned before, an OSI institution was needed. And so, Professor Rogério Colasso, uh, Professor Elena Galhardas, and Rodrigo, uh, with whom we have wrote, written the, the proposal, uh, they were on board from the first moment, and therefore, thank you very much for making this happen for you. Now we have two, but there's the third element missing. And the third element was the city of Oeiras. Uh, the very other Pedro Patash, uh, we explained to him what it was. He brought this to the mayor, and then with this amazing team, with Elizabeth Brigada is here with us, and Agatha Branco, I think you're also here. There she is, thank you very much. Because everything that happens in the city, it happens because of them and because what they do and what uh, the, the work they are putting forward uh, for your summer here in Portugal. So we have the three uh, organizations together. There's the proposal, but there's uh, one last thing missing. It was the email that last year, in the very beginning of uh, the year, uh, Goktug and Pascal sent saying that we were awarded with the uh, decision to host here the, the SSP 2022. So there's this uh, African proverb that says, it takes a village to raise a child. There are more people behind these, uh, uh, these scenes that make this possible. And I represent here G2 with uh, uh, all the ISU staff and the lecturers that are working also together since uh, Christmas, uh, last Christmas, to put SSP together in this program together for you. So here we are in SSP 2022, and we can only connect the dots that will come in the future uh, after this happens, right? And what will happen is that during uh, this um, uh, these induced nine weeks, we'll have 107 participants from the 37 countries that you already met. We'll have 38 uh, experts from the Portuguese uh, sector. Uh, we'll have 
40 Portuguese institutions and 25 professional visits for you. And why is this? One thing is to bring you all here, have the SSP and everybody goes home and that's it. But we don't want that. We want to, this moment to be a game changer also for, for Portugal. So we want that all the experts that come together with you, get involved with our national institutions, get involved with our national experts, and create routes for what, what will become in the future. And therefore, we have put, uh, you know that you have five, um, five team projects, and for, from those five, three come from the local organizing committee. We have, for example, the first one, space ocean climate interactions. This is from um, an int the Atlantic International Research Center, which is an org Atlantic, uh, international organization that exists, it was created here in Portugal, that those who choose this TP, you will be working to support this organization. So your work, what you will write on that uh, document, what you will present by in two, uh, nine, months, uh, nine weeks from now, it will support this organization for their decisions in the future. We also have the microgravity business. In Portugal, we want to develop the microgravity sector together with ESA, some ESA projects that exist. We want to understand how this business can be improved. And those who will be working on this, on this, uh, on this TP, you will be contributing for the decisions that will be taken after. And one of the key milestones, or one of the key messages that we are at the agency, we are always um, pursuing is, we are always speaking with space people, let's say. So we need to connect space and the non-space sector. How the non-space activities can leverage on the space data that exists. And, there it is. And therefore, those who will be working on this TP, you will support us in this quest and this mission to connect the space and non-space world. So, whatever you will be doing here, your work will be crucial for the future of our decisions as well. So this is why whatever happens now, we we'll only connect, can only connect the dots in the future. But we want that from this point onwards, your work, the work that everyone is bringing to, uh, to these nine weeks, will create routes for the future. And one of these dots, if you realize, it's going to be the best ISU student flying in microgravity on 16th of September. So also don't forget that. We count with you, this is a lifetime experience for you. This will definitely change your life, perhaps similar to how it changed mine and other ISU uh, SSP alums. This bringing SSP to Portugal is also a dream from other ISU alums. I see one of the first ISU alums here uh, with us, Afzal. Thank you very much for being here. So I think this is a community uh, to bring this to Portugal. We are very grateful for ISU to accept us, of course, to Technical and to Awareness, and all the team, uh, the Portuguese uh, Space Agency team that uh, helped us in making this together. So thank you very much to all. Enjoy the nine weeks, because when you open your eyes, you'll be flying home. This goes really, really fast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hugo, and uh, thank you all the local organizing committee once again. As Hugo mentioned, it will go fast. However, also as he mentioned, SSP is, I mean, the end of the nine weeks will not be the end. Actually, it will be the beginning for, for uh, many things here in Portugal and also for you. I would like to uh, also continue acknowledging um, some people who has already been acknowledged, but I think they deserve to be acknowledged once again. The program staff who are working behind the scenes uh, from also all over the world. They are coming from actually 21 different countries. Uh, around 50 of them are working behind the scenes in different roles, and they are also with us. Please give them a big applause because they are the pillars of this program this summer. And obviously, I have mentioned that we will have 212 experts 
and counting uh, on our list as of today, some of uh, which who has already arrived and is representing the rest of the faculty. And also I would like to thank on their behalf uh, to all of them who will be coming here to Portugal all, or who cannot make it, but will join us virtually also once again for their support. So also let's give our expert an applause. <laughs> And last but not least, obviously, all the other uh, you know, institutions who are putting efforts and money into this program. Without their generous support, NSSP would not at all be possible. So I really want to acknowledge them one by one here. So we have Canadasis, Aerospace Corporation, Royal Military College of Canada, University of Waterloo, uh, Carol Carnett and Michael Potter as our individual sponsors for the program. <laughs> Amazon Web, Association of uh, Space Explorers, Blue Origin, Brazilian Space Agency, Canadian Armed Forces, Chinese Academy of Sciences, Technology and Engineering Center for Space Utilization, French Space Agency, CNES, Canadian Space Agency, CSA, Dr. Kalpana Chawla Scholarship Project from India, UMETSAT, European Space Agency, ESA, Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, French Air Force, Ilan Ramon Fund from Israel, Indian Space Agency, ISRO, National Institute for Space Research, IMPE from Brazil, Israeli Space Agency, ESA, Italian Air Force, Italian Space Academy, ASI, Portugal Space Agency, Republic of Korea Army, SSPF uh, from the Netherlands, Tohoku University, and UK Space Agency, UXA. Give a big applause for all the sponsors, please. <laughs> With that, I think it's time to really keep this going, kick this off. So. I have checked with my team all around. Uh, I checked with academics. They said go. They said uh, logistics, go. IT, go. ER, go. I also check the launch window is now open. So as the director of SSB 22, I say all the participants, and also online, whoever as, uh, watch, are watching us online, buckle up, enjoy the ride. It's the summer, summer of your life. I hereby declare SSB 22 open. For the ones who are joining here in uh, Portugal, in Orash, in this auditorium, we will be hosting, uh, well, the local organizing committee will be hosting and inviting us to a reception. So you can please join us uh, from either of the doors in the auditorium. Thank you very much. <laughs> 